What's up, YouTube hikers? Don't forget to smash and punch that subscribe and like button. My eighth grade students dared me to do that. I promise I will never do that again. That was as cringy for me to do as it was for you to hear. Buckskin Gulch via the wire pass. On this day, the day that we went in October, you can see it was an absolutely gorgeous day. It hadn't rained in probably a couple of weeks. By the way, if anybody can tell me what this is, my wife and my brother-in-law are convinced it's a baby rattler. Anyways, this is just a gorgeous hike. Uh, the conditions were absolutely perfect. Um, you know, we did the Grand Canyon, and that one was dangerous because of the length, uh, going rim to river to rim. Uh, we did uh, Zion West Rim, which was a little sketchy because of how close you were to the edge. This one has to be the most temperamental of all of the hikes that we did. Uh, buckskin is completely dependent upon the conditions and the weather. Before I explain what I just said, um, in this part of the video, you're going to see here shortly that uh, Mark and Shelly and Ashlyn are looking up to the right and trying to figure out where to go. The ladder had washed out previously through the wire pass. You go, most times you go down uh, a ladder and then back up a ladder. You could still go down. There's a rope there that can help you shimmy up and shimmy back down if you want to. Um, or right where they're pointing right now, there's a workaround. We will show you the workaround at the end of this video. I mentioned earlier that this hike was very temperamental. And what I meant by that is, is this hike is going to be very much based upon the weather conditions that you get. Uh, everything about it, including the drive-in. We drove uh, from the north, came in from the north on Highway 89 on House Rock Road, which is a dirt road. And uh, the best way to know that you're from Indiana is to drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee on that road going about 25 miles an hour because as an Indiana person, it's as sketchy as you could possibly get and being passed by cars like you're standing still, most of them having Arizona and Utah plates. I, I do believe we got passed by a Prius uh, flying by us. Um, but again, I, you can tell by the weather conditions, it was an absolutely perfect day. This is not you know, it's particularly the wire pass, it is so opened up. You don't want to go in the middle of the afternoon on a June or July or August day. Uh, it would be extremely hot. Um, you have to be very, very careful of the weather in, in regards to rain, particularly during the monsoon seasons. Not just the day of, but the day before. And not just the day before and your specific location, but many, many, many miles, 50, 60, 70 miles out. As you are going through a gulch that fills up, you'll see spots on this video where you have debris that's 50 feet up in the air over the top of us. And in fact, a couple of hikers about six months before we went from Ohio, another Midwestern state, got caught in the gulch and lost their lives because they got caught in the gulch during a flash flood. There are numerous videos on YouTube as well where you can see people going into the gulch in conditions where the water is up to, you know, they're anywhere from their ankles all the way up to their waist and they're wading around in that stuff. And it's not just water. It's like this soupy oatmeal mess um, that again, is the, the whole hike is just totally dependent upon the time of season that you go and the weather that you go. You have to, have to, have to do your research and make sure that you check the weather, triple check the weather, check the conditions, the temperature and everything before you go. Uh, but again, as you can see on our weather conditions, it was just an absolutely perfect day. And the camera will absolutely, it cannot do it justice. Uh, as you go around every corner, I know on the film it looks exactly the same, but there was something different around every corner. The light shined on those rocks and canyons uh, differently as we went through the wire pass and then the overlook of the wire pass, but then also all the way through the gulch to the, um, the overlook at uh, the end of Buckskin Gulch. 
Also, a little PSA announcement from your resident 8th grade U.S. history teacher. These works of art right here, these petroglyphs, are thousands of years old and have really stood the test of time. These are not a place that you take your kids to, have them dump their hands in mud, and then spatter mud all over uh, the petroglyphs. Also, another PSA announcement. When you get here to the end, you want to make sure that you head right right. Do not go left. I don't know where left will take you. I'm sure somebody can comment on that, but right is Buckskin Gulch.
Okay, to emphasize the point that you have to make sure you know what you're doing, look right above Ashland's head, and you can see tree limbs and debris and other items that are probably 50 to 75 feet above her head that were washed out by water in a flooding storm. Where would Ashlyn go if she's caught in that right there? Nowhere. You have to pay attention to the weather. This was really the only soupy mess we had to try to navigate, and it really wasn't all that bad. We just like taking opportunities to poke fun at Shelly when we can on film. Oh, look at you. Like a pro. Daughter of the pro. Again, as of October 20, 23, when you leave Buckskin Gulch and into the Wire Pass, the route that you're seeing right now would be the route that you would take in and out of the beginning of Wire Pass. But as you can see, a flash flood knocked down the ladder, which created a situation where you were either going down a rope about 10 to 15 feet being a person who hasn't done a pull-up since Mr. Pearson's athletic PE class in 1990 or so, uh, we decided to do the workaround. Uh, what you're getting ready to see is us coming out of uh, the wire pass and finishing our hike. Everything that you see us do, obviously, would be in reverse coming back down. That's what you have to get up. This is the workaround. The ladder is down, so this is what you have to climb to get up and out of the wire pass. And so we saw a lot of reviews on all trails that talked about how this wasn't a big deal. Uh, we actually saw a lady talking about how she did it with her dog and she was uh, in her mid 60s or early 70s. We didn't find it quite that easy. It's not terrible, um, but it is a little sketchy. And so you have to watch it trying to get around.
It's the sand that gets you. Yeah. Kind of came a little bit too far right, but that's okay. Just no, that's the way the, the other way. okay. But the lady came that way, and I came right where Shelly said I came right up that way. Can you get up there? That's where I, I came. I got up on that one, and then the next. Do you need to take your backpack off and leave it there? Just that one spot. Why are you filming? <laughs> Because of the ladder being washed out, the beginning or the end of the workaround is right down there where Mark is standing right now. Buckskin Gulch. As you can see, we caught the perfect hike on the perfect day. We spent seven days doing Bryce Canyon, the Narrows, Zion's West Rim, 
we floated down the Colorado River around Horseshoe Bend. Uh, we did the Grand Canyon. But if you can catch buckskin on a beautiful day, it, it ranks right up there with some of the best hikes you can do in the Southwest.